War involves an unquantifiable and unimaginable degree of human suffering. This talk is about the ongoing civil war in Myanmar. There are people dying every day or leaving everything behind as they run for their lives. Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, is a country in Southeast Asia, bordering China and India. Currently, it is embroiled in a civil war between the authoritarian Burman majority military junta ruling Myanmar and various pro-democracy rebel groups which seek to establish a federalist state. As a former British colony, Myanmar has a long history of racial and ethnic conflict between the Burman majority and the diverse array of ethnic minorities throughout the country. Since 1962, Myanmar has been under military rule in one way or another, beginning with a coup in that year which put the country under their authoritarian rule, which is little regard for human rights and ethnic groups outside the Burman majority. The military allowed an election in November of 2020, yet the pro-democracy party won and the military felt that they were losing their grip on power. So, the military launched a coup in February 2021 and established a junta, but the people revolted in the spring revolution. Massive protests sprung up across the nation, and the military cracked down, murdering thousands in the city streets. In response, armed groups called People's Defense Forces were formed, or protesters joined the various ethnic armies already fighting. And so, a silent low-level war expanded dramatically to the full-scale civil war going on today. But why am I talking about this? Why do I care so much about this war? I'm not a member of the diaspora. I don't have any direct stake. I'm intrigued by the civil war in Myanmar because there's a critical lack of news media coverage. I also am concerned by the massive human cost. Unlike most wars, there is a clear good side, that being the rebel forces, and a clear bad side, that being the junta in power which regularly commits war crimes. Yet despite this uniqueness, coverage and awareness of this war is extremely limited. This war brings a prospect of rarely seen monumental democratic progress while also bringing unimaginable atrocities. We cannot ignore the cries of help from our fellow humans. The military regularly commits war crimes, while the rebel forces largely do not. Daily, the military launches airstrikes on random targets, including hospitals, schools, homes, or literally anything and everything else. The military does not care what the target is. The military also uses other fear tactics, like regularly burning villages. Although these atrocities don't often kill people en masse, they force thousands to flee in fear with nothing but their lives. One infamous example of a village burnt by the military is the burning of Thot Long, a town in western Myanmar that was burnt in 2021 in response to the combat successes of resistance fighters in the township. The entire population of over 10,000 people were forced to flee either by the fighting or the arson. Yet another war crime is the use of anti-personnel landmines. These landmines caused 1,024 casualties in 2023. 20% of which were children. These landmines have rendered areas both uninhabitable and unusable, and have been placed randomly in villages all across Myanmar. As of May 2024, there were an estimated 2.7 million displaced people, a number that is only growing, and an estimated 50,000 killed since the coup on all sides. These numbers are just estimates due to the incredibly volatile, war-torn area and extremely limited media coverage. The vast human suffering of the ethnic and religious minority Rohingya Muslims, who live in the western Rakhine state, cannot be ignored either. They are the victims of the ongoing Rohingya genocide, which began in 2017 when the military launched a campaign of ethnic cleansing, systemically massacring, murdering, raping, and burning the villages of Rohingya Muslims. The Rohingyas are racistly viewed as non-citizen foreigners by the military and have had a system of apartheid forced upon them where they are only allowed to live in certain villages and have access to adequate food, healthcare, water, and other necessities blocked, resulting in starvation for many. The civil war has seen the largest escalation of the genocide since the massacres initially began, with the military seeking to starve the Rohingyas and the rest of Rakhine State into submission. 
while the military indiscriminately bombards Rohingya villages. While the military conducts atrocities, the rebel forces enjoy widespread support from the civilian population and are consistently educated on the rules of war. Resistance fighters view the junta soldiers as, the, as their brothers, coaxing them to surrender and treating them well when they do. Even widely hated junta pilots who have bombed and murdered countless innocents are treated well. This is incredibly significant. Often in war, there is no clear superior side, since both sides commit atrocities and only want power. Yet in this war, there is one definitive evil side, the junta, as it carries out genocide, massacres civilians, and destroys villages, while the rebels are explicitly fighting against that. They fight for the people, democracy, and an end to the racist oppression the military has inflicted upon ethnic minorities for decades. Luckily, the rebel forces are winning. In late October of 2023, rebel forces launched Operation 1027, a massive offensive with equally massive gains against the junta. As of today, more than half the country is under the control of rebel forces, leading many groups to view the junta's fall as inevitable. This possibility has been met with increased brutality from the junta, who have increased their use of airstrikes, indiscriminate shelling of civilian areas, and its use of arson, leading to massive casualty increases. The junta has also implemented conscription out of desperation as defection and losses take their toll. The reality of this situation is probably new to you, since there is a dire lack of media coverage. Currently, news media and most governments are much more concerned with other conflicts, like in Palestine and Ukraine, based on coverage and visibility. I wanted to quantify this lack of coverage, so I looked at the New York Times articles published between June 23rd, 2023 and June 23rd, 2024, to indicate what the industry is doing. There were a total of 5,395 articles published that covered Ukraine in some way, and yet only 202 articles published that covered Myanmar. The major outlets only report on Myanmar when something big happens, although the complex, ever-changing environment of Operation 1027 got a few articles. It still wasn't important enough to get a significant increase in coverage from the New York Times. Even the news outlets are aware of this, with numerous articles, including from the New York Times, calling it a forgotten war, an overlooked war. As of now, this is a state of the war. Thousands have died while the international community has done largely nothing. Maybe a few words here and there, or attempts by the UN to increase the visibility of the conflict, but largely nothing. We must pay attention to this war. Why? We have a duty to our fellow humans to share their stories and make sure that atrocities do not go unpunished. But also because this war is between democracy and authoritarianism. When has there ever been a clearly defined good and bad side in a war? There are multiple lessons to be learned. What comes next? The junta is collapsing. The desperate implementation of a draft is evidence enough of this. When the junta eventually collapses, the question becomes how to rebuild something new that works for all the various rebel groups who have their own goals and ethnic groups. Luckily, the many rebel groups appear committed to realizing progress and peace, staying united after their common enemy, the junta, is gone. Many groups have rallied with the national unity government an in-exile government and framework under which to build a new federal democracy where all ethnic groups gain the autonomy they've been fighting decades for. If they succeed, then they will do so where so many others have failed. From Ireland to Angola, unity has failed to be maintained following revolution, then progress stalls and war continues. If the rebel groups succeed, their work could become an inspiration to others where complex racial and ethnic tensions exist, proving that progress is possible against evil, a ruling class, and unthinkable atrocities. This war is a part of a global movement against authoritarianism. From Georgia to Sudan to Thailand, people are fighting for democracy. 
If democracy is successfully established in Myanmar, it would be a major win against authoritarianism on the global stage, an inspiration to democracy movements everywhere. The aftermath of this war is paramount to the future of democracy. People in Myanmar have been calling for help, and those in the diaspora have been protesting and making noise in all the ways they can, asking for action against the junta. We cannot allow a war that brings the possibilities of progress so unique to human history to be as forgotten and unnoticed as it is now, lest we lose hope and the commitment for change. We cannot ignore the atrocities the junta regularly commits. The international community is more than able to prosecute when needed. War crimes need to be addressed and dealt with. So. While the atrocities the Russian government has committed against the people of Ukraine are often made known in the news, the situation in Myanmar is eerily similar, but not mainstream. So, what can you and I do? Well, the most simple action of being aware is a very important step, as it increases the visibility of the situation in Myanmar one person at a time. Then, you can go one step further, Tell your friends, tell your family. The more people that know, the more visibility. Apathy and ignorance are authoritarianism's best friend. Other options include donating to organizations helping those in Myanmar, such as the UN's Refugee Agency or Human Rights Watch, which works to document war crimes. But at the very least, I urge you to take one thing away from this talk. Our fellow humans in Myanmar are suffering amid a civil war where an authoritarian junta is committing unspeakable atrocities while rebel forces fight for the people and democracy. Don't continue to let this suffering go forgotten and unnoticed.